How's it going my bakers? Welcome to episode number two of the cheese and bread series. Today we're making mozzarella and using the leftover whey to make pizza. So let's go to the kitchen and get started. As soon as I finished making my previous cheese and bread video, I started looking for other projects of that sort. Cheese can be surprisingly easy to make at home and the results are pretty good. The leftover whey has many uses, but since this is a bread channel, we're going to make some dough with it. This quote unquote mozzarella is simpler, easier, quicker and uses fewer pieces of equipment and ingredients than the previous cheese that we made. It only contains two ingredients and of course the bread dough is pretty simple too and I will even show you how to make a nice quick tomato sauce. This is one tasty project I can tell you that and another type of cheese ticked off the list. There will be of course more, I'm kind of into that right now. But let's get to it, let me show you how to make this cheese and this pizza starting with the ingredients. And as I just mentioned the cheese only takes two ingredients, you'll need some full fat milk and some vinegar. Make sure you don't use the ultra high temperature or ultra pasteurized milk. It will work with regular pasteurized milk or even better get some raw milk but it definitely won't work with the stuff that has a long shelf life. When it comes to the acid you want to use distilled vinegar. This malt vinegar has an acidity of 5%. Your apple cider vinegar might not be strong enough for this project. Right moving on to the bread ingredients and you can really use whey in any bread recipe that you like. But for the recipe in this video you'll need some white bread flour, whole wheat flour, yeast, salt, olive oil and some whey. Whey has a water content of around 93% so you should do your hydration calculations according to that. It is also acidic so it will tighten the gluten structure so keep that in mind. For the quick pizza sauce you'll need some good quality tinned tomatoes, salt, oregano, olive oil and some leftover basil stalks if you are planning to put basil on your pizza of course. You can of course adjust this recipe any way you like. I'd say the main ingredients are the tomatoes, the salt and the olive oil. As for the equipment we'll need a pot, a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe and a slotted spoon. This is pretty important, we'll use this to fish the curds out of the way. This is not the type of cheese that needs to be strained through a cheesecloth. In fact if you use a cheesecloth you will ruin it. Even using a sieve or a colander will be pretty much pointless. So the slotted spoon is the way to go. When it comes to baking the bread I'll be using my Lloyd's Pans pizza pan. But you can use any baking tray that you like, it doesn't really matter for this recipe. I'll start by making the tomato sauce just to get it out of the way. You will need an additional piece of equipment to make it and that will be a stick blender or food processor. Combine the tin tomatoes, the salt, the oregano, the basil stalks and the olive oil. And then use a blender or food processor to blitz it until it's smooth. If you don't own a blender, if you don't want to be bothered making the sauce, you could just get some pre-made pizza sauce. There's nothing wrong with that. But this is pretty quick, easy and tasty, so it's worth making. Leave it in the fridge for later, let's move on to making the cheese. A quick note on the amount of milk that I'm using. This is 2 liters, but the written recipe only uses 1 liter. 2 liters will make 2 bowls of cheese, but the pizza only requires 1. So if you want to make 2 pizzas and 2 pieces of cheese, just double all the ingredients. Right back to making the cheese. Set the pan on medium to high heat and warm the milk up to 46 degrees celsius or 94 degrees fahrenheit. It will take a while to warm up the milk and you want to stir it occasionally so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. Once it's up to temperature, pour in the vinegar and give it a good stir. Pretty much as soon as you stir in the vinegar, the curds and the whey will start separating. When that happens, turn the heat off and leave the mix to sit for around 5 minutes. During this time the curd will separate even more. That way we will get the most out of our milk. After 5 minutes it should look nice and chunky just like this. Ok next up we need to try and get as much whey out of the curds as possible. Start by collecting and pressing the curd against the side with the pot. As you do this the whey will turn from white to slightly yellow. Once the majority of the curds is stuck together transfer it to a clean bowl. From here we'll switch to using our hands. Press and knead the curd together and pour in the excess whey back into the pot. You want to get it to a consistency where it's one cohesive piece of curd. Now we must reheat the curd and you have two options. You can either reheat the whey then place the curd back into the whey and let it sit there for a while but that is slightly messier and quite a lot more time consuming. A great alternative is using the microwave. Just blast the curd for 30 seconds at a time and get it up to 70 degrees celsius or 160 degrees fahrenheit. This will essentially melt the cheese together and it will make it nice and stretchy too. As you can see that during reheating even more whey came out of the cheese. We must remove the last bit of it. We must make the cheese nice and smooth. Get a bowl of cold water, dip your hands in there because this is going to be pretty hot. And then work the cheese like you would work a piece of dough. Fold it over itself whilst going around in a circle. If it gets too hot, Dip your hands in the cold water again and continue. 
it will get smooth as you keep folding it. But don't expect it to be super smooth, it will still have a rough surface. What you do from here is up to you. You could leave it whole, or you could pinch it into two pieces like I did, and then shape them into rounds, just like little dough balls. And just as with dough, pinch the seam together at the bottom. These are some natural moves for someone with baking experience. Once you're done shaping, drop the cheese ball in cold water and leave it to cool down. After cooling down, we'll wrap the cheese in cling film and leave it in the fridge for later. And that's all there is to making this. It should take no more than 20 minutes from start to finish. And only two ingredients, and very minimal hands-on time. When it comes to the leftover whey, strain it and leave it to cool down. It can be used not only for bread making. You can pour it into soups, stews, sauces, you can boil pasta in it, or rice, or vegetables. So there's no reason to waste any of it. Alright, let's move on to bread making. First things first, temperature control. My kitchen is pretty cool right now at around 22 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm aiming for a final dough temperature of around 25 degrees Celsius, so I let the whey cool down to about that temperature. Take a large bowl, combine the whey, the yeast, the salt, the olive oil and the whole wheat flour. And then mix to dissolve the salt and ensure that all the ingredients are dispersed evenly throughout the liquid. A whisk is a great tool for this but a spatula will do the job just as well. Okay, once everything's mixed up nicely, add the final ingredient, the white bread flour. Then grab your dough scraper and mix it to a dough. It will be pretty loose and sticky, but that's normal. Whenever you're handling sticky dough like this, wet your hands with water. That'll make your life a lot easier. I usually like to give the dough a light fold after I mix it up, especially now that I skipped the kneading step. A light fold goes a long way. So tidy up your dough bowl, place it in a clean bowl and take its temperature. We are pretty much dead on. This will be cold bulk fermented dough, so straight after mixing, pop it in the fridge to chill down for 30 minutes. The hydration of this dough is relatively high, so we'll need to give it a few folds to develop the gluten and make it nice and tight. After 30 minutes, take the dough out of the fridge and with wet hands, pick it out of the bowl, fold the sides of the dough ball down, then press them back up into the middle of it. And if that made no sense, just watch my hands and follow. Keep doing this until the dough ball is nice and tight. That's the first fold done. Cover the dough ball up, place it back into the fridge and leave it to chill down for 30 more minutes. This dough will take 3 folds in total. You want to perform them the same way as the first one at 30 minute intervals. This kind of recipe is super tidy and convenient. Each fold takes no more than 20 seconds and the dough never touches the table. After the third fold, place the dough back into the fridge and leave the bulk ferment for 12 to 24 hours. If you want to make your pizza sooner, take it out after 12 hours. I left mine in there for around 20 and it has fermented real well. Let's move on to getting it ready for the final proof. When I make breads like these, I don't hold back on the olive oil. It goes in the dough, it goes in the sauce, it goes in the tray, it goes on top of the dough, it's all over the place. If you want to reduce the fat content, instead of olive oil, just use some baking paper in the tray. And of course don't cover the dough in oil. Final proof will take around 2-2.5 to two and a half hours. You want to preheat the oven during the final hour of fermentation to 250 degrees Celsius 480 Fahrenheit, fan off. You'll know the dough is ready when it's nice and wobbly. I would definitely call this wobbly. Let's put this to one side and let's have a look at the cheese. It's been in the fridge all night and it has completely set. It's a little bit soft and bouncy, but it's not at all like your buffalo mozzarella. Forget about that texture. This cheese is strictly for baking. When it comes to dividing it, you can either tear it up with your fingers or you can cut it up with a knife like I did. Right back to the dough. Wet your hands with water once again, then dimple it lightly and spread it out so it fits the tray. Add about 3 to 4 tablespoons of tomato sauce and spread it out. Then top with the cheese, a little bit of oregano and some more olive oil if you're like me. And then finish with a sprinkling of sea salt. Of course you can use any toppings that you like. And you can make the base thicker or thinner up to your preference, or whatever you decide to do. Once you're done topping, get that bad boy in the oven. It'll take around 20 minutes to bake. As soon as you close the oven door, Turn the temperature down to 230 degrees Celsius or 440 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it has puffed up and nicely browned, it is ready. All you need to do now is be a little bit patient, leave it to cool down for 5 to 10 minutes and then tuck in. Whilst you're doing that, appreciate what you just made. You took some milk and vinegar, you mixed them together, you made a piece of cheese. You used the leftover liquid to make a cold fermented bread dough. And then you combine the cheese and the bread to make a delicious pizza. That is quite a cool project if you ask me. And the result is so delicious. That super light and puffy bread topped with a sweet and slightly tangy sauce. And that slightly chewy delicious cheese. It all works so well together. I could not get enough of it. 
So what do you think this recipe? Do you make cheese at home? Let me know down in the comments. You want to see more days like this one? Click over here. Subscribe to the channel. Click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.